The circle and ellipse effects can both be found underneath the generate category, and you might think these are kind of useless effects since we have shape layers, but watch through anyways because you might be surprised. I'm gonna make a new solid and I'll just make it white and apply the circle effect to it. And we have a little circle centered in our layer. We can adjust where that is using the position controls or by clicking and dragging that position control. We can increase or decrease the radius just using the radius control. And then we have edge controls. Currently it's set to none. We'll come back to that in a second. We have a feather option, which just allows us to basically blur this out. And as you can see, it's very responsive, very quick to update. And we can invert the circle. So if I reset this so it's back in the center and I invert the circle, I could go to the color control and make it black. And you could use this as a transition, like an old iris wipe, basically. Just making sure that you don't go to a negative number because then it will disappear completely. So set it to zero and it's a black solid. So that's a little fun use for it. I'll reset that one more time and we'll take a look at the opacity, obviously this is just going to be the opacity of that circle. And then we have the blending mode, which we'll come back to as well. First of all, let's jump back up to the edge. Right now it's set to none. I'm gonna make my circle a little bit bigger. If we change the edge to edge radius, then the edge radius value appears and we can basically have a secondary control for the center of the circle, making this a stroked circle instead of a filled circle. So we can adjust the radius for the outer edge and the edge radius for the inner edge, but each of these can overlap. So you can really push or pull these however you want. We also have individual controls to feather the outer edge as well as the inner edge individually, which is a nice little feature. You can make some cool looking shapes this way. But if we take a look at the edge options, we can change it from edge radius to thickness. And now it's gonna be treating it more like a stroke that's centered on that circle. The radius is basically the center point of that stroke and then the thickness is the stroke width. We also have the ability to change this to thickness times radius, which is just multiplying it by a factor of whatever the radius is. Meaning when I turn the radius way down, the stroke is going to scale down with it. When it's bigger, it's going to scale up with it. And then finally, we also have thickness and feather times the radius. So that will take into account whatever feathering you have applied here as well. So again, if I turn this way down small, that feathering is going to scale down with it. Now let's jump into our second comp and apply the circle to that. Again, it replaces the content of the layer, but if we look at the blending mode and change it from none to say screen or overlay, then it's going to blend it with the layer that we've applied it to. And this is where you can have a little bit of fun maybe choose a different color, something like that. Maybe turn the edge to say the edge radius and put a hole in the middle there. I could invert the circle, add a feather to that outer edge. So lots of different things you can do with that effect. Let me jump back to this comp really quickly and just reset it again. Now, one reason you might wanna use the circle effect is because sometimes shape layers can be pretty slow to render. And like I said, this effect is very snappy. It's very responsive. And if all you need to do is some very basic stuff, it's possible this could save you on some render time. And you could control the position of this circle just by animating the position of the solid layer. But another way you could do it is by tying this center control to a null object. So if I go up to layer, new, null object, this is a layer that doesn't render. It just has transform properties that we can basically use to parent things to. And then I'll double click on the center property of the effect to bring it up in my timeline down here. What I wanna do is basically parent this property to the position property of the null. To do that, I'm going to alter option click on the center stopwatch to add an expression. And I'm gonna start by using the expression pick whip to click and drag and go to the null one layer, not to the position, but just to the layer name. I'll let go and it will fill in the expression that I need to reference that layer. And then I'm going to add a period to comp with a capital C and it will auto fill. And between those parentheses, I'm going to start an open square bracket to create an array and just type zero comma zero comma zero. Make sure that closing square bracket is there and click off. And now wherever the position of this null is, that center value will follow it. And if you wanted to link up the radius as well, you could do that. I'll just alter option, click on the radius and type in value times, then grab my expression pick whip and grab the X value of the scale for the null object, then finish it off with divided by 100. So what we're doing is taking the value that we have set here, multiplying it by the X scale value and then dividing it by 100, which essentially keeps it where it's at when this is at 100%, but scales it by a factor of whatever we change this value to off of 100. So if I click off of that expression, nothing changes, but if I turn the scale up or down, 
on that null object, now it's going to follow that. So that's how you can make a little rig for this effect. All right, let's take a look at the ellipse effect, which again, we're going to need a solid to generate on top of. So underneath circle in the generate category, there's ellipse, I'll apply it, and this looks a little bit different. Let's make it bigger. We have individual width and height controls, that's why it's an ellipse, not a circle. And then I'll make it a lot thicker, so we can see that nice and clearly. Now, by default, it has this pink and orange inside and outside color, but we can change that to whatever we want. So maybe something like this, Again, we have the center control that we can use to reposition this however we want, and we have the ability to change the thickness of that line. The softness is defaulted to 50%, but I could increase that or decrease it so there's no feathering at all. And we have the ability to composite it on top of the original. So if this was that photo, it would be appearing on top of the photo, but there are no options to blend that using blend modes. I think this effect is a little less useful, especially because you can really see the segments of the outside of the ellipse with no ability to increase or decrease the samples. So in this case, I think shape layers will get the job done better for you, but now you at least know about it. And that's all there is to the circle and ellipse effects. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.